Good evening, church. Shall we all stand? We are so honored to be in the presence of our Almighty God this evening. We know it's a strength that our Almighty God gave us that enabled us to be here this evening. And we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, Lord. We are so grateful unto you for everything you've done. We are so grateful unto you for bringing us thus far. We just want to say thank you. Let's take time and thank our almighty God for everything he has done in our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are in our lives. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for bringing us thus far. As House of Prayer family, we want to say thank you, Lord. During this time of prayer and fasting, Lord Jesus, you gave us strength, Lord. That's the one reason why we are here this evening. Only because of your strength, only because of your grace, Lord Jesus. And we want to say thank you, Lord. Father, our prayer, our cry, our desire is that as we stand in worship, as we stand to praise you, as we stand to glorify your holy name, only one cry is that you may come have your very own way, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, we come before you, Jesus, just as we are, Lord. Yes, and ask of you, Lord, that you may come have your way, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, as we heard in the few days, Lord Jesus, that you wanted us to be. Yes, Lord, holy as you are, we bring before you our lives, oh Lord Jesus. We offer our lives at your feet, Lord, and ask you, Lord, if still there is anything that's holding on to us, Lord, that is stopping you from having your way, cleanse us and make us whole, Lord Jesus. So as we stand, you'll be able to bless us, Lord Jesus. As we stand, and in praise and in worship you'll be able to come down and manifest your glory in midst of us Lord Jesus we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Jesus take full control of the entire service Lord and have your very own way and do as you please Lord Jesus because you alone are God and there is no one like you Jesus nobody like you Jesus nobody like you Jesus Yes, Lord, we are living testimonies of how faithful you are, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. give you all the glory and all the praise because you alone are God. Oh yes, Jesus, there is no one like you, Jesus. We praise you this evening, Lord. Yes, Jesus, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Lord Jesus. There is no one, no one who can stand with us, Lord Jesus. No one who's so faithful to us, Lord Jesus. No one who loves us like you do, Lord Jesus. No one who cares for us like you do, Lord. You are so caring and loving and faithful, God. That's why we are here this evening to praise you, Jesus, to pour out our thanksgiving unto you, to give you all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, all the worship, Lord, that you alone deserve, Jesus. We are at your feet, Lord Jesus, laying our lives before you, Lord, and ask you, Jesus, that you may come have your very own way, Lord Jesus, as we worship you, Lord Jesus. May you arise, Lord Jesus. May you arise, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Our confidence is in you. Our trust is in you. Our hope is in you. That's why we've set apart this time. Just to look upon you, Lord Jesus. Look to your face, Lord. And to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Father. Have your very own way, Lord Jesus, in our lives, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus, we glorify your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are, Lord Holy, Jesus. Holy, Holy, are you, Lord God, Almighty. You are all. 
Thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you, God, for your provision. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Oh, even strengthening us with your Holy Spirit. Father, on the fourth evening, as we sit at your feet, Lord, we pray you will speak to us through your servant of God. From Monday, Tuesday, last night, you spoke to us precisely, your God, clearly, your God. Tonight you have something new for us, O oh God. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds to receive the word of oh God. As we are preparing, we commit the India house of your family, O oh God. Father, the devil and the team, they have still an agenda that we will not successfully complete to the seven days of prayer and fasting. On the fourth evening, we paralyze the schemes of the enemy, O oh God. We cancel death, accidents, calamities, sicknesses, whatever things the devil wanted to bring into the territory, a house of prayer. We paralyze it, we declare, we are covered with the blood of Jesus. Peace, unity, tranquility, supernatural victory is our portion, O oh God. Father, among us who are sick, we declare healing in the name of Jesus. Even this territory of Kanini, the strong man, we paralyze. We take Kanini for Jesus. Lord, if any strong man is trying to bring any confusion, we arrest the strong man and loosen the heaven for us, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Speak to us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Praise the Lord and good evening, church. Praise the Lord. 
the lord is good all the time and that is his can we give a, a clap offering to our lord to appreciate him <laughs> hallelujah on the fourth evening of our prayer and fasting all of you look awesome wonderful glorious in the eyes of god look at your neighbor and say you are full of god's glory hallelujah and tell your neighbor you will make it seven days hallelujah we shall make it seven days. We shall see God's victory. We shall see God's breakthrough. Amen. Let me take this opportunity to welcome you all to the fourth evening of our prayer and fasting. Amen. Are we blessed, church? I just want to let you know, not for just the sake of saying, the time we have set apart, God is rewarding us. He will reward on this earth. He will also reward in heaven. Hallelujah. I don't think anyone can say a word. The time I set apart on earth to be with the Lord is a wasting. No, no. You can go to certain place and meet people. It can be a wastage of time. But when we set apart time to be with the Lord, it is eternally rewarded. Hallelujah. May God bless you all. Are blessed. Amen. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, and last night, Pastor Raja had blessed us. Pastor, thank you for the word. Tonight, we are moving into another dimension. The man of God, Pastor Ivan Mashongo. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor, changing your name. <laughs> Forgive me. Hallelujah. Pastor is not new to us being here. Is our Assemblies of God senior pastor at Indola Worship Center. Uh, he's with his family. He's uh, one of a close friend to House of Prayer at the moment. I think after he joined Indola, I think within six months he came here to preach. You are a blessing to us, Pastor. Hallelujah. I don't want to waste any moment so that man of God has at least enough time to minister the word of God. Are we ready to receive? Let's put our hands together. Welcome Reverend Ivan Mashago to come and do deliver the word of God. Welcome, Pastor. Greetings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. How men are happy to be in the house of the Lord. So grateful to the King of Kings that once again, has accorded me this opportunity to stand before the great men and women of God to just be part of what God is doing in the house of prayer. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful as well to the servant of God, Reverend Joseph, his wife, and the entire leadership of the church. Hallelujah. Like I already, already alluded to, I am not new here. I have been here several times. I think this should be my fourth time or so. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm so grateful that I can be part of what God is doing here in this prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Standing firm in Christ for supernatural victories. That is what we are looking at this year as a congregation, as a church. We need to move in the victories of the Lord. Hallelujah. Very quickly, I have not come alone this evening. I have come with my dear wife. Please stand as and wave to the people. That is my dear wife. I'm a man of one wife and five kids. Hallelujah. The last, the last bones are twins. We had planned for four, but the Lord gave us an addition. This is how good this God is. I, need, I think you need, some of you need that grace. Hallelujah. And I believe as we are doing the prayer and fasting, the Lord will begin to work and will continue working. Hallelujah. Very quickly, First Samuel, chapter 30, I'll read verse 1 to verse 20. Hallelujah. The Bible reads, Now, when David and his men came to Ziklag on the third day, 
The Amalekites had made a raid against Negeb and against Ziglag. They had overcome Ziglag and burned it with fire and taken captive the women and all who were in it, both small and great. They killed no one. If there is a mistake the enemy has committed in your life, is to make you come out alive, out of that situation that you went through. Hallelujah. Some of you went through a lot of pain. People even began to think, I think we just need to be ready for anything. But you came out alive. I'm saying if there is a mistake the devil has made, is to make you come out alive. Hallelujah. Because the Bible says they killed no one but carried them off and went their way. And when David and his men came to the city, they found it burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and daughters taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him raised their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. David's two wives also had been taken captive. Ahinom of Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nebel of Carmel. And David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because of the people were bitter in soul. Each for his sons and daughters but David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Hallelujah. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Ab Abiathar the priest, the son of Ahimelech, bring me the airport so Abiatha brought the airport to David, and David inquired of the Lord, Shall I pursue after this band? Shall I overtake them? He answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake this band. For you shall surely overtake and shall surely rescue. So David went out, and the 600 men who were with him, and they came to the brook Bessel, where those who were left behind stayed. But David pursued he and 400 men. 200 stayed behind, who were too exhausted to cross the brook Bessel. They found an Egyptian in the open country and brought him to David, and they gave figs, and they gave him bread and, uh, and he ate. Then they, they then gave he water to drink, and they gave him a piece of cake, figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit revived, for he had not eaten bread or drunk water for three days and three nights. We are just doing seven days. This man did a total of three, three days. We are doing seven days. And David said to him, To whom do you belong? And where are you from? He said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to the Amalekite. And my master left me behind because I fell sick three days ago. We had met a raid against the Negev of the Cherethites and against that which belongs to Judah and against the Negev of Kareb. And we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, where will, will you take me down to this, to this band? And he said, swear to me by God that you will not kill me. Or deliver me into the hands of my master, and I will take you down to this band. 
And when he had taken him down, behold, they were spread abroad over all the land, eating and drinking and dancing. Because of all the great spoil, they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the land of Judah. And David struck them down from twilight until the evening of the next day. And not a man of them escaped, except 400 young men who mounted camels and fled. David recovered all that the Amalekites had taken, and David rescued his two wives. Nothing was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or nothing. That had been taken. David brought back. David also captured all the flocks and heads. And the people drove the livestock before him. And he said, this is David's spoil. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Father, I pray that God, as I step aside, you take charge, you take over. In the name of Jesus. The preaching of your word, Father, is accompanied by signs and wonders. The workings of miracles. Father, I pray that God this evening, as I'm just continuing, Father, from where your servant that started, Master Lord, ended. I pray that God give me grace, give me clarity in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. For it is not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit of the living God. In this prayer and fasting, Father, we have made a decision to stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that Lord indeed as we pray, as we fast, oh God, give us the grace. But the end of the master and the fasting, we want to see grace. We want to see victories. We want to see, Father Lord, solutions and answers. I pray in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Father, use me as a vessel tonight. In Jesus' mighty, precious name, I pray. Amen. Very quickly, this portion of scripture that we have read is a scripture that is talking about the servant of God, David. Hallelujah. At this time, David had run away from the nation of Israel. Because they were not in good terms with the king who was the king so at this time. So he ran away and he went to join forces with the enemies of Israel. Hallelujah. At this time, because we know that the man was facing challenges, he left his place and went into a foreign land. Hallelujah. At times, because of what you go through, you decide to join forces with your enemies. Hallelujah. Sometimes we go through issues and challenges of life. And we end up supporting the people we are not supposed to support. This is what is happening with this man. He runs away and goes, goes to join forces with the enemies of Israel. And this enemy of his, they had gone into battle into the battlefield with the Philistines. Hallelujah. And the Philistines, they began to protest, to say, David is our enemy. Even if he's showing that he's on our side, this man is our enemy. We cannot allow this man to go with us to the battlefield. Hallelujah. So in short, they chased him away from the battlefield. The man had nowhere to go. He decided to go back home with his own people. And they were given Ziglag as a place to settle. They were coming from the battlefield, chased by the Philistines. And I'm sure they were very tired. Coming home, they found there is a smoke in the village. Hallelujah. There are times you prepare that now I'm going back home, I'm going to rest. Before you even reach home, you find there's fire. 
Benny. No place of rest. This is what we find in this portion of scripture. And the Bible tells us that because of what they found, the village was bent down. The women and all the children and everything was taken into captivity. And they began to cry. They began to shed tears. You've come to a place in your life where you have nowhere to go. You just get on your, on your knees and begin to cry. The Bible says they cried and they cried and they cried until no strength remained in them. How I pray that we believers can come to a place where when we begin to pray, we pray with all the strength that is within us. The man, the Bible says, they cried. And the people amongst the army, they began to talk and they began to say, it is because of him that we have lost all that we have lost. Let us gather and let us pick stones to, to deal with this man. So the man, even his own people left him. He remains alone. You come to a place in your life where you expected people to support you. The same people you expected to support you are drawing away from you. And you remain alone. Your relatives, your brothers, your sisters, your uncles, your fathers and your mother are the people you expected to come and find counsel, comfort. But these are the people that are drawing away from you. This is what happens with this man, David. Hallelujah. So they said we are going to stone him. Hallelujah. They have gathered up against you. They want to stone you. They want to deal with you. And I want to assure you, as you do this prayer and fasting, there is something that is God, God is doing behind your back. There's something that is God you know, is trying to do to work out things in your life. When people are gathering up against you, I want you to know there is a God in heaven that is working on your side. Hallelujah. This is what the Bible tells us. What does the man do now? Hey, things are hard. Things are tough. He has no one to support him. The same people that he expected to support him are now against him. They picked up stones and the Bible says, There's something this man did. This evening, I want to encourage you on what I'm simply calling when calamity strikes. When calamity strikes. Hallelujah. So when the man saw that he had no one to support him, and the Bible tells me that what David did is very important. Number one thing that I want to take you to take note of, the man, the Bible says, he encouraged himself in the Lord. When calamity strikes, you need to come to a place where you go to a place and begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. I know you have encouraged a lot of people. You have encouraged a lot of men and a lot of women. But you must come to a place in your life where you as an individual must begin to encourage in the Lord. I know there are things that, you no know, situations that we've been through, like this man David, when things were hard, when things were tougher, the Bible says uh, the man David encouraged himself in the Lord. Child of God, if you're looking forward to seeing people come to you and comfort you and tell you it is okay, it is well, you may not be able to see such kind of people coming your way. When such times don't come, uh, you must come to a place uh, in your life uh, where you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. You come to a place where no man is, no woman is. Uh, you get to your knees uh, and begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. Uh, child of God, uh, there are people you expected uh, to come to your aid, uh, to come to your support, uh, but those people may not be there. I want you to know when things happen, uh, when things are harder, uh, when things are tougher, uh, when calamity strikes, uh, you must come to a place uh, in your life uh, where you encourage yourself in the Lord. Child of God, in this world, everybody is busy with their own things. Sometimes you think people are going to pray for you. They are busy praying concerning their own situations. At such a time, you need to come to the Lord and begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. Child of God, I want to assure you that 
God, as you begin to strengthen yourself, as you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord, as you begin to strengthen and begin to move towards the will and the purposes of God, as you encourage yourself, even in this prayer and fasting, there are people who are saying, we've been praying and we've been fasting. I cannot do it this time around. Yes, I want to assure you that you must come to a place in your life where you say, even if I've been praying and fasting, I have not seen an answer coming my way. I will encourage myself in the Lord. I will pray and fast once again. I will go again to the church and worship my God. You need to come to a place where you need to, to receive that encouragement from yourself. This is what we discover. Even us as men of God, sometimes we come to a place where you expect this fellow man of God to come to your aid, to support you, to be on your side. But these men are busy with their own programs. They are busy with their own problems. Child of God, at such a time, you need to come to a place where you say no matter what happens, I will rise again. I will encourage myself again. I will preach again. I will stand up again and save the Lord. No matter what happens in my life, I will encourage myself. You've been expecting people to come your way to encourage you that you used to sing in the press team, but you are no longer singing in the press team because of the situations that you are facing in your life and nobody has been able to come through to support you. Child of God, at such a time, you need to come to a place like Tebera and encourage yourself in the Lord and say no matter what happens in my life, I am a child of the most time. God. I am going to stand in the kingdom of God, in the house of God, and do my, my, my that which God has called me. I am going to encourage myself in the Lord. If you are waiting for people to encourage you, they may not be there for you. Hallelujah. You have been, you have been encouraging so many people. You have been encouraging and strengthening so many people. But when things are tough and hard in your life, and no one is there to support you. You need to encourage yourself in the Lord. Like David, the Bible tells us, when calamity struck, when the calamity came, yes, in the life of David, the man knew what to do. That's why the Bible tells us uh, that the man David uh, encouraged himself in the Lord. Child of God, uh, in this prayer and fasting, I want you to know, I want you to understand uh, that you are coming to a place uh, where you are going to encourage yourself in the Lord because the people that were on your side, uh, the people that are supposed to encourage you are no longer supporting you in the name of Jesus, I pray that as you desire and as you desire to stand firm for yes in Christ Jesus for supernatural victories you must come to a place in your life where you say no matter what comes my way I will stand my ground I will encourage myself in the Lord I am going to give once again to the Lord I am going to preach the word of God once again I am going to sing once again in the mighty name of Jesus even if you know when people look at you they don't think that you go through issues and challenges of life. The reason could be simple. You've been there encouraging yourself in the Lord. No matter what you faced in your life, you've stood your ground and you've said there is nothing that shall separate me from the love of God. Nothing shall be able to move me. Yes, from the position where God has placed me. When you come to a place, yes, in your life, you begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. There is no power. There is no situation that to move you. The man David in you that if I do not encourage myself uh, in the Lord, even my wife, uh, they want to encourage me. He has been taken into captivity. There are people that you thought would be there, but they have been taken into captivity. Some of them have been taken uh, by sickness and disease. Uh, I want you to know at such a place, uh, you must encourage yourself in the Lord. Encourage yourself like David. The man encouraged himself in the Lord. And he says, no matter what, I am going to stand my ground. No matter what, I am going to, yes, to stand and do that which God has called me. David said, why are you cast down, oh my soul? Why are you defeated within me? The man David began to speak to himself and says, yes, I know that things are hard, things are tough in your life. But David, why are you cast down? 
David, you are not supposed to be where you are. You are not supposed to be what you know in this situation. Peter, you are not supposed to be where you are. My child, I want you to stand. I want you to encourage yourself in the Lord. Why are you discreeted within me? Situations surrounding you are not there to bring you down. They are not there to crush you. They are not there to stop you. They are not there to hinder you. They are there to make you and to use the situations that you face in your life as a stepping stones when the situations come and encourage yourself and say, here comes my opportunity. I am going to rise again. I will use this opportunity that has come my way. I am going to use this sickness and disease to, to step and get to the position where I am supposed to be. It will not keep me down. It will not stop me because I am as a, I'm a child of God. I am not going to allow any situation to weigh me down. So the man says, oh David, why are you cast down. Oh my soul, why are you discreeted within me? Yes, sir. Yes, you must trust in the Lord. When you encourage yourself, you must know that I trust in God. I trust in the creator of the heavens and the earth, the earth and the finisher of my faith. Yes, the king of glory. He is called the Ekuweme. He is the beginning and the ending. He is the God that you trust. When you will trust in man, man will disappoint you. But God will never disappoint you. Yes, encourage yourself and say, your father has disappointed you, but your God will never abandon you. Your God will never reject you. You are not supposed to sit where you are. I want you to rise and begin to move on. I want you to rise and begin to serve God. I want you to rise. No matter what happens, encourage yourself in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. You must hope in the Lord. You must put all your strength in the Lord because there's a as you stand firm in Christ, uh, that is how victory comes your way. That is how you know, solutions come your way. That is how healing comes. Uh, that is how deliverance comes. Uh, I know by the end of the story, the man David uh, will not remain the way he is uh, at this particular time. Uh, when you encourage yourself in the Lord, uh, I want you to know that the situation uh, you may be passing through right now will not remain the way it is. Uh, you are coming out uh, victorious uh, at the end of the day. You shall be a winner in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Like the man, the man David encouraged himself in the Lord. Encourage yourself, child of God. No matter what has happened in your life, encourage yourself in the Lord. Like David, encourage yourself in the Lord and tell yourself, I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to stand. I'm not going to be hindered. No matter what happens, no matter what situation, no matter what circumstance, I will not be hindered because I trust in the Lord. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Number two, like David. Turn to the Lord for comfort and guidance. The man, after encouraging himself in the Lord, he comes to the priest and he says, Priest, give me the airport. I want to prepare myself for. The man is dressed for worship. When you go in the streets right now, you find the prostitutes dressed for business. When you go to the mine, you find miners dressed for work. When you go everywhere you want to go, you find people dressed according to the occasion. You go to the wedding, you find even people, women here understand it better. When there is a wedding, they have a particular cloth they must put on. The man David in you. I cannot just encourage myself in the Lord. When I am facing this kind of a situation, I must come to a place in my life where I dress for worship. The man dressed for worship and he goes into the house of God and began to worship God, began to inquire of the Lord. When calamity strikes in your life, you must come to a place where you dress for worship. When time comes and prepare yourself to enter into the house of God, 
God to enter into the Holy of Holies. Prepare your heart to go into the Holy of Holies and go and address God and be able to remind God. The Bible tells me that when David encouraged himself in the Lord, the man dressed and went into the presence of God and began to worship and began to lift up the name of the Lord and began to inquire in your life, child of God. You cannot sit, you cannot do business without inquiring of the Lord. You cannot get married without inquiring of the Lord. You cannot come to a place where you say, my man of God, you do not understand. I am late. This is a, 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 an urgent matter. I will pray as I run. I will pray as I move. I will pray as I go. That is not how things are done. David did not begin to run after the enemy. The man stood his ground. He went into the presence of God and began to inquire of the Lord. If you meet calamity in your life, you must come to a place in your life. Before they take you to the hospital, you must call the man of God. Man of God, I need prayer that as I go to the hospital, the doctors will be able to give me the right medication. But many times we do things and remember to pray when things are already done, when the damage is already done. The man David, because he faced a calamity in his life, he came to a place where he began to inquire if you want to overcome, if you want to see victories in your life, in your family, in your career, in your business, you must come to a place where before you do anything, you must inquire of the Lord. Seek, your, seek, seek the Lord. Seek him where he may be found. Even in the midst of your situation. Even in the midst of your circumstances, you must come to a place, child of God, when things are hard, when things are not right, even putting on a necktie does not make sense. You come to a place and say, God, these seven days of prayer and fasting, I am going to go in, I'm going to pray and fast because of the situation. That I'm going through, I will not allow it uh, to stop me, to hinder me. Child of God, there are situations in your life uh, who make you put uh, something around your head. Uh, when you go in the presence of God, you prepare with the cross of sacrosa uh, and begin to seek God uh, and begin to pray. When you begin to pray, all the powder, all the jalibu that you applied on your face uh, begins to waste away because of prayer. When you pray and the no, the, no, the, 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 everything that you put on your face uh, begins to wear away. Child of God, I want you to know situations uh, that has made you put a cross around your head, uh, they cannot stop you. If you only you can realize, uh, like the man David, uh, even if as he was encouraging himself, uh, he had put a cross around his head, uh, and the man was crying. Uh, he thought the wife and the children uh, had died, uh, but the man came to a place, uh, he begins to seek. God. He began to pray. He began to pray. He begins to pray. And you must pray until answers come. And you must pray. And when the answers don't come, you must again pray. When answers don't come, you must again pray. You will not stop until answers begins to come your way. And the man begins to inquire, should I pursue my enemies? Am I going to overtake them? The man, David, received an answer when you go in the prayer chamber, you will begin to get answers. You will begin to get solutions because God answers prayer. Because God makes a way where there seems to be no way. There are things that you thought your wisdom or your education can sort out. There are things that cannot be sorted out by education but by prayer. Even the doctors are saying, we do not know what to do. You must go in the prayer chamber and begin to pray and begin to say and begin to declare in the name of Jesus. Some of you, when you begin to pray, the way you sweat when you're in the presence of God, you know that it is serious business. The man David in you, this is serious business. Not some of you know as you are running, you are also praying. Man of God, you don't understand. Let me first go and get married. When I finish my ceremony, that's when I'm going to get to prayer. Man of God, you do not understand. You do not understand, man of God. 
let me first go and finish that business deal. When I am done with the business deal, I will come and pray. That is not how things are done. I am saying that is not how things are done. I will come and pray and fast. When I am done with my, no, my, my, my effort, it will not bring any answer. It will not bring any solutions. The man, David, knew what to do. And the Bible says there is a man that lived on the face of the earth. This man called David. This man, David, was a sinful man. He was a man that could not be compared. This man, there's nothing that he did. He didn't do. He killed. He took away people's wives. This man, the Bible calls him a man after God's own heart. Child of God. When things are hard, you must know where to run to. You must know where to go. It is in the prayer chamber. Whether you, where you lock up yourself, in the house, in the room, and say, my God, I will not let you go until you bless me, until you heal me, until you deliver me. The man David prayed, my God, I will not let you go until you, you tell me whether I should go after my enemies, whether I should go after that business deal, whether I should go after that lady that I want to marry. Many of you pray when you're already married to a devil. Too late. I'm saying too late. David didn't do that. When calamity strikes, seek God. I'm saying seek God. Seek God, the Bible tells me, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. The Bible does not tell us whether this righteous man is in problems or not. It only says the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. If you know what to do, when calamity comes, it is to go in the presence of the Lord, in the Holy of Holies. Yes, prepare yourself and dress for worship. In the name of Jesus, sir. child of God, the man David, he had to seek the face of God, inquire and consult God. I'm saying inquire and consult God. Consulting God results in great victories. I'm saying consulting God brings great victories. In your life, in your career, in your business, in your destiny, when you consult God, it is going to result in great victories. Don't you no know, desire to see things when you make mistakes and expect to see a different answer or solution. The man had to seek the face of God. Should I pursue them? Am I going to overtake them? God says pursue and you will overtake them and you will recover. When God speaks, it is a done deal. It doesn't matter how many devils are rising against you. It doesn't matter what kind of sea you are facing before you. Because this God that you are talking about is a God that makes a way where there seems to be no way. He parts the waters. He can, is able to make the waters to be at a standstill until the children of God pass, until they cross over. When you seek the face of God, God will begin to give you directions. He will begin to give you instructions. He will begin to give you what to do. Answers and solutions are going to come your way. This is what we find in this part of the scripture. The man God, the man David, he was instructed to pursue. Hallelujah. What God says is what is important. Not what men say. Not what your uncle says. Not what your, your, your mbuya says. It is what God says that really matters in your life. Hallelujah. Number three. When calamity strikes, leave the faint hearted behind. Leave the faint hearted behind. Pastor Peter, how, that, how do I put it in Bemba? Leave the faint hearted behind. Because we are now. At a place where, when David inquired and he was instructed by God that you must pursue your enemy, we come to a place now where 
the 600 foot soldiers are behind David. They come to the, to the river called Bethel. And at this point, others are saying, I am tired. I cannot go any further. In this life, there are people that you thought are going to be with you all the way. When you move halfway, they are saying, I am tired. I cannot go with you any longer. I cannot move with you any longer. The Bible tells me, the man David, he says to them, that way you are tired. Remain here. We are going to find you here. When calamity strikes, child of God, you must come to a place. In your life, uh, the people that are pulling out uh, uh, must, must remain behind. Uh, the people that are not going to work, to work with you uh, remain behind. Uh, because some of those, uh, they delay you. Some of you, where you are supposed to be is not where you are. Not because you are the one who is the problem, but because uh, there are people that following you that are not supposed to go with you. Lot must remain behind. Uh, Lord uh, must remain behind. Uh, alas, you may not enter in the land where God uh, has promised you. You may never see any victory because some people are a negative in your life. Uh, the negative people must remain in your life. Uh, the people that discourage you must remain in your life. Uh, when you face calamity, you do not meet, you do not need uh, some of the people always speaking negatives. I always saying we will not go anywhere. We will not finish building. We will not do this and that. We will not do that. These are some of the people that must remain behind. When calamity strikes, you must come to a place where you say, whatever comes my way, I will stand my ground. I am only going to go with the people that are willing, with the people that are there to support, with the people that are ready to be loyal, the people that are ready, that we do the work of God together. This is not man's work. This is God's work. The work of God cannot be hindered. There are people who think, if I am not there, there is nothing that will happen. If I am not there, nothing will work. There are people who think, when they are not there, things will not work out. I'm going to sing a Bemba song. Bustel Bemba song. Johnny Gataripo. Johnny Gataripo. Hey. Oh. You are not getting me, man of God. What we are simply saying if I'm not there, nothing will work. Even in the football team. When and I'm, I'm not there, can we shower? If the moment is not there, no one is going to score. They think when Daka is not there, no one is going to score. These are the people I'm saying uh, must remain behind. Some of the people in your lives, uh, some of the people in your families uh, have been delaying you. The people that delay you by the end of this plan fasting uh, must remain behind. Uh, some of you are working, uh, have companies. Uh, some of you are running businesses. Uh, the people that you are working with uh, are delaying you. Those must remain behind. Uh, they must be left behind. Uh, as long as they say, I am tired, give them their pension. Uh, let them go. Why? Because the people that you want to keep, uh, when they say, I want to go, are the people that are going to delay you. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Uh, anybody that delays you must remain behind. Uh, any situations uh, that delay you must remain behind uh, out the river basso. Only the willing uh, must run with me. Only the willing uh, must stand firm in Christ. Uh, there are people who even can question even the theme for the year. Standing firm what? If you have a past if you people don't pretend like you never used to, to listen to those songs. Or else I'll leave you behind. As I'm preaching, you must move and flow, you must flow along with me. 
Don't make me be, be delayed. I'm saying don't make me be delayed. Some of you have been delaying your own marriages. There are people, there are friends in your life that are delaying your marriage. There are people in your family that are delaying your business. There are people in the community that are delaying your career. Child of God, everybody that delays you must remain behind because you must move at a particular pace. When you are tired, you'll be moving like a dot but do not want a movement of a tortoise. We want speed. I'm saying we want speed. As this can fail in Christ Jesus, we want speed. There are people who say, oh, you're talking about, oh, ladies, you're talking about towels. I'm going to buy all the towels. How can they raise that kind of building? Where are they going to get the money from? Heaven does not lack. That's why God has brought some of you here. Heaven does not lack. Hallelujah. This is why when the 200 remains behind, they crossed. 400 men. When they crossed, they found another man, an Egyptian, an enemy. When they thought we had subtracted from the number, Another one comes. I'm saying another one comes. When they thought, if I do not give in church, yes, we will see if they are going to finish that project. When five people leave, one man comes and says, all the chairs in the church, I am going to buy. I am saying, oh, when, you, when, you, when you meet calamities in your life, you need to appear. You need to meet, to meet your helper. When they crossed over, when others thought, yes, we will see. The number is reducing. We will see with this coronavirus. We will see when they thought nothing will happen. Yes, they'll be surprised. When they come next time, they'll find us yes, celebrating because when they crossed over, they met their helper in your life. When you meet calamities, you need an helper in your life. When you meet calamities, you need people to support you, people to stand with you in this life. When calamities come your way, you need to meet your helper. I pray for you this evening and in this prayer and fasting. You will not miss your helper. I am saying you will not miss your helper. You must meet your helper. Yes, Pastor Peter, come. Some of you have been moving. Please come. You've been moving, looking for your helper. When you go this way, your helper is somewhere else. When you come to look where they were standing, yes, you move this side. They are no longer there. When you pray and seek the face of God, God will tell you, not this way. Turn around. Begin to go in this direction. You can to a place when you never thought you are going to meet your helper. You come to a place where you meet your helper at an expected place, at an expected time when the men thought now we are going to get lost. This Egyptian appears. The man was tired. The man had no food. The man was sick. The man was weak. When you meet your helper, some of your helpers are dirty. Pick them. Yes, take them to the shower room. Wash them and give them more. Yes, Vaseline. Let them apply Vaseline on their face and give them food. When they get food, give them a, a, a cup of water. When they get a cup of water, then they'll begin to give you the secrets of where your enemies are. If you meet calamities in your life, your helpers will appear. When your helpers appear, you will not miss your helpers. I pray for you in this prayer and fasting. You will not miss your helper. I am saying you will not miss your helper. As I have come tonight, I have come as a helper. As you have come tonight, you have come as my helper. I will not miss you. You will not miss me. You will not miss this man. You will not miss this woman because these are your helpers that God has raised. Some of the helpers look weak. Even in a weak person, there is information. Even in a dead person, there is information. I can be looking dead, but I know there is something inside. I'm saying there is something inside. That which God has deposited in me.
Some of you are failing to marry that particular woman because she looks dead. Get her, marry her, and take her to the shop where they sell. No, if you think to Then you are going to know that, oh, I didn't know. Can't she, there is a particular no, piece of, made, piece of no, material somewhere here. That I'm, I'm, I know the women know what I'm talking about. You know, that's when, when, when you are going to, to understand, child of God, as you come to a place where you meet your helper. You must feed your helper. When your helper is fed, it will begin to reveal every secret where your, your, your wealth is hidden, where your wife is hidden, where your riches are hidden. It is that man who said, it is us who bent down Ziggler. David even knew, I have found them because he is a man that is confessing of what they did. When you meet your helper, yes, sir, they will confess in the name of Jesus. Man of God. In that nineteen thirty. I pray for you. I'm saying I pray for you. You will meet your help. When I pray, I was praying, asking the Lord, what am I going to give your people? Your coming tonight is not an accident. You are here by divine appointment. Some of you needed this word. It may not be coming as powerful as you want it to be. Your helping or something to help is not sometimes properly wrapped. If I have 100 kwacha and I put in an envelope and I squeeze it, is it going to lose its value? it will still keep the same value. Some of you, when you look at yourselves, you look valueless. I am here to tell you, you carry value in you. I am saying you carry value in you. The world has been waiting for you. The Bible says the world has been waiting for the manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. It is you the world has been waiting for. We want to see in this time businessmen, powerful businessmen. We want to see professors in our churches. Why? Because when they look at you, they, they see a nobody in you. Does that help? Hallelujah. Man of God, you can sit. Thank you so much. Mr. Zimba, please forgive me. I'm not following your, your, your instructions. I'm supposed to remain somewhere here. Hallelujah. When the man showed them where they were, they were supposed to go. My wife, bring me the jacket. As I conclude and as I pray for you. At, at first it was what? You cried. When they, where they come now, they find the enemy. They are eating, dancing, tired, over eating. That an enemy cannot even rise to fight. There is also a time to tie your cloth around your, your waist. And I'm sure you know, you my friends, the Africans, you know what it means. Mr. Zimba, if he was there, he was going to begin to play the rumba type of music there. I am here to tell you, what made you cry will not keep you in the position of crying. It will move. There is coming a time when you need to tie your cloth around your waist. It means a celebration. I'm saying it, is, it means celebration. There is no victory without a fight. I'm saying there is no victory without a fight. Some of you, when it is time to dance, see, we have to prepare ourselves. Hallelujah. Some of you, when it is time to dance, 
Yes, you cried. You must prepare yourself. The man David says, the Bible tells us, he killed everyone. Did he leave some women around? Some women didn't fall. They never used to carry women for war. The children were not there. It was only fathers who thought, now I am rich because of what I've gotten from Ziglag. They were celebrating. There comes a time when your enemies will no longer celebrate. I'm saying there comes a time when your enemies no longer celebrate. You better prepare yourself because the sounds of celebration are coming your way. I'm saying the sounds of celebration are coming your way. Hallelujah. So the dances, some of the dances you have seen, it is just human made. You can also make your own. When God does something in your life, when calamity comes, you must know victory is coming. When you see a cloud, you must know the rains are coming. Blessings are coming. I'm saying blessings are coming. Blessings are coming your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, the son of the living God, as you stand firm in Christ, overtake them and recover. There is a place for joy and jubilation. There is a place for continued, when you continue standing firm in Christ, yes, you must know Jehovah as Jehovah Shalom. I am saying you must know him as Jehovah Shalom. According to what the Bible tells us, in the first verses, the Bible says nothing was missing. They recovered everything. Jehovah Shalom means nothing missing. Nothing lacking. And nothing broken. You were taken in captivity. Your business has not been doing well. I am here to tell you. There is nothing missing. There is nothing lacking. There is nothing. You are coming out. Your business is coming out. Because when you meet calamity, you must know victory is on the way. Celebration is on the way. You cannot remain in a position of crying. There is a place for shedding tears of joy. May that be your portion in Jesus' name. I'm saying may that be your portion in Jesus' name. You've been crying over your business. I'm here to tell you. Yes, prepare yourself because tears of joy are coming your way. In the mighty name of Jesus, even tonight I pray that whatever has been standing against your life, it must be broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever has been causing delay and your movement in your life, I command it is broken in the name of Jesus. Whatever satanic or demonic crossing uh, that has been placed upon your life, uh, upon your business, uh, upon your career, upon your destiny. I command today, it is removed in the name of Jesus. Uh, I am saying it is uncovered. Your business is uncovered. Your career is uncovered. Your marriage is uncovered in the name of Jesus uh, by the power and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the name of Jesus, when calamity is a strike, encourage yourself in the Lord. Stand firm in Christ for supernatural victories. I'm saying encourage yourself for supernatural victories. Father, we pray tonight. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. I didn't dance. Mr. Zimba didn't play. <laughs> Well, Mr. Zimba is my my boy. I come from Chinsari. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Char Char, be blessed. Hallelujah. Encourage yourself. Inquire from the Lord. Leave the faint hearted. We are strong. Thank you, Pastor. And also, I'm sure. Was he was preaching, there are a lot of prophetic declaration. I believe you have received it. Shall we all stand? Ushers on the fourth evening, if you have come with any tithe and offering, two ushers quickly. Any of you have come with any tithe and offering, any two, if ushers are not here, any two quickly. But offering bags are on the front.
Please thank you, church. Thank you, pastor. He just laid a foundation. Let us not miss. Uh, encourage some of our friends. Tomorrow we are here on time so that we can continue celebrate God's presence. Amen and amen and amen. Sister, Sister Riley. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Hallelujah. Whatever the Lord has been speak to us, meditate on from day one. Day one and day two and day three, the Lord was preparing us to be holy, to come close to him. Now the victory has begun. Hallelujah. Thank you. Let's ask whatever God has given to you after dropping, just close your eyes. Just meditate the word that has been spoken. When the calamity strikes, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. As the man of God has declared, House of prayer, a season of celebration. Hallelujah. We need to encourage yourself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for the word that you have spoken to us, O oh God. Thank you, Lord, the way you have used your servant, Jesus, O oh God. Tonight, as we go, may you go with us, O oh God. Lord, even on the fourth evening, thank you, God, for the sacrificial giving of your people. We pray, let them not lack anything. There will be thousandfold return, O oh God. Thousandfold return. They shall see God's abundance, O oh Jesus, O oh God. Lord, you see your servant tomorrow more mighty. Bring your people, O oh God, so that at the end we can say, my God was really good. As we go back, take us home safely. Anyone feels weak or tired, we release divine strength, O oh Jesus, O oh God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen and amen. God bless you richly. See you tomorrow. Bring somebody. Let them be blessed. Man of God, Reverend Evans, thank you for the word. God bless you. As you drive, somebody need a lift. Give somebody a lift. God bless you. Good night. From glory